You know, in the tech world, there's this massive shift happening, like right under our noses, and almost nobody is talking about it. While we're all caught up in AI and the newest smartphones, a quiet revolution has been brewing for years. So let's get into it. It really makes you wonder, are we all missing the bigger picture here? Because the data is showing that an operating system, one that most people just thought was for developers, is starting to make a serious, serious move into the mainstream. And we're not talking about some slow trickle here. The numbers are crystal clear, and they are pointing to a really surprising trend of steady, consistent growth. Okay, so according to the U.S. government's own digital analytics program, which, by the way, tracks millions of visits to government sites, the Linux desktop is now holding a 5.8% market share in the United States. Now, I know what you're thinking. That might not sound like a huge number on its own. But just look at where it was a decade ago. It was barely over half a percent. We've gone from 0.67% to nearly 6%. I mean, that is a massive jump. So the real question is, what's behind this quiet surge? Well, a huge piece of this puzzle isn't just about what's pulling people to Linux. It's about what's pushing them away from something else. And that something else is, overwhelmingly, Microsoft Windows. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of reasons people are getting frustrated. Support for the incredibly popular Windows 10 is on its way out. To get to Windows 11, you might need a brand new computer that a lot of people just don't have. Users are getting annoyed with interface changes they never asked for, and gamers have been dealing with some pretty frustrating performance bugs. And on top of all of that, there's this growing unease about privacy and the really aggressive push toward AI. And that whole hardware thing? It's a really big deal. One analysis found that a full quarter of all PCs running Windows 10 simply cannot upgrade to Windows 11. That's a massive number of people who are going to have to either buy a new computer or start looking for a new OS pretty soon. I mean, listen to Microsoft's official vision for the future. This is straight from the top. They see Windows becoming an agentic OS, one that's super deeply integrated with AI to manage all your work and your devices. This is the future they are actively selling. But yeah, the reaction from a lot of users has been, let's just say, less than enthusiastic. Instead of intelligent productivity, they're seeing an AI big brother, an operating system that feels like it's constantly peering over their shoulder. And oh boy, the blowback was immediate. When a Microsoft executive tweeted out that vision, one of the top replies just hit the nail on the head. The very strategy Microsoft thinks is their future is actually what's pushing their users straight into the arms of their biggest competitors. So if people are getting pushed out of the Windows ecosystem, where are they supposed to go, right? It's not enough to just want to leave. You need a good place to land. And today, more than ever, Linux has become that truly viable alternative. And look, this is not the super complex command line Linux of the old days. Modern versions are incredibly user-friendly, gaming performance has gotten so much better, and maybe most importantly, Linux gives users back the one thing they feel like they're losing, control. And we've got some pretty solid proof this is actually happening. Let's take Zorin OS. It's a user-friendly version of Linux that's designed to feel really familiar to Windows users. Its latest version got downloaded a million times in just over a month. People aren't just Windows shopping. They are actively making the switch. And here is the real kicker. Get this, a staggering 78% of those million downloads were from people using Windows. So this isn't the existing Linux crowd trying a new flavor. This is a full-on migration of Windows users searching for a new home. Okay, but this whole thing isn't just about individual users making a choice. There are much larger global forces at work here that are really speeding up the shift on a massive scale. It's all about this idea called digital sovereignty. And really, it just means countries don't want their critical data and digital infrastructure being controlled by foreign tech companies. They want to be in charge of their own digital destiny, and you can't really blame them. And you can see this happening all over the place. Governments in the EU are actively ditching Microsoft products for open source software like Linux. They've even built a proof of concept for an EU OS that's based on Linux. The UK has sounded the alarm that Microsoft can't even guarantee that UK data will stay in the UK. It's become a huge issue of trust. So we know Linux is climbing the charts on the desktop. But what if I told you the way we've been looking at this whole market share thing is, well, completely wrong. What if Linux is already number one? 
Right, this is the chart we've all seen a million times. When you look at desktops, Windows is the giant, Mac OS has a nice slice of the pie, and Linux is that tiny little sliver at the end. But here's the thing, that's only the desktop. For so many of us, our main computer isn't even a desktop anymore. So what happens when we zoom out and remember one critical fact? Both Chrome OS on laptops and Android on our phones are built on a Linux foundation. That's the core, the very heart of the OS. The reality looks a lot more like this when you include PCs, tablets, and smartphones. The Linux-based Android OS is in a league of its own, with over 72% of the entire global market. It's not even a competition. So yeah, when you zoom out and look at the entire picture, the quiet underdog has already won. The foundation of the world's most popular operating system is Linux. So this rise on the desktop, it's not the start of the revolution. It's just the final piece of the puzzle falling right into place. And that leaves us with a really fundamental question. As all of our devices get smarter and more connected to the cloud, this whole issue of control becomes more important than ever. So who should really be in the driver's seat? Should it be you or should it be the company that makes your OS?